I was really impressed with the uh, police, police community relations efforts. What are some of the uh, metrics or other evidence that's demonstrating that type of connection that you're working so hard to create? Thank you. Um, last year we adopted the 21st Century Policing Task Force recommendations in whole. Uh, we did know that everything that happens nationally has the potential to affect us locally. So we wanted to be ahead of the curve in doing those things that build trust and legitimacy in our community. Our mayor uh, was very forward thinking in adopting our body one uh, camera policy. We did that way before the state recommended it. And anything that uh, gives us voice in terms of the community, uh, we want to do. So we often take uh, recommendations from them on how to build out our policy. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I uh, actually have a follow-up question to that. Um, really, I am also really intrigued by your community outreach uh, in, the, in the police force, and um, it feels so folksy. I grew up in the South, so I can say that. Um, the front porch. Uh, the front porch roll call, that's a twin twister, and um, the cops and barbershops. And I guess I'm wondering, um, how are, so how do you decide how to reach out, like whose front porches are those on? How do you get into communities that may really have a lot of distress and may not want a bunch of police officers on their front porch? Um, and then with the barber shops, again, how um, how can you tell that trust is being built? So it's a, a bit of a deeper follow up to that question. Look, uh, Chief and um, Lieutenant Cowdy, I'll speak specifically to some of those issues. But it goes to the core of recognizing the city of 100 and 40,000 people, 400 or so sworn, you cannot properly police a city, keep the peace, unless you have the trust of your people. So we could ourselves today in a truly transparent department. Every bit of data that is not part of an ongoing investigation is public information. We share data with our citizens every single day, so they understand that, yes, there were 150,000 contacts with citizens last year, there were 7,000 arrests, there are 400 use of force complaints. There are three times the officers discharged their firearms. These are those three times. This is the officer. This is the race of the officer. This is the race of the, of the subject. This is how it's independently investigated. This is your information. This is how we did this. And the constant sharing of information, the constant opening of our doors, the constant interaction. We have a citizen on our internal affairs review board. We have the chair of the Urban League on our hiring board to make sure that the, that, the, that our officers reflect the constitution of, of, of demography of our, of our city. It is an intention, intentional effort to make sure that people know that this is their department, run by civilians, by and for our civilians. But he doesn't speak specifically to uh, uh, roll call and the barbershop. So we get volunteers uh, from our community to invite us onto their porches. And what ends up happening, it turns into some sort of court party. They'll have pizza or, or some coffee or sodas and drinks. We end up having a great uh, conversation. But it is roll call, so it's a time to spring on there, and we, we go. Uh, the barbershops, cops and barbers, uh, we went out. And most barbershops in Columbia are closed on Monday. We sit down and have a, a candid conversation. Uh, for me, barbershops is where you got all the, the, the town gossip or, or what's happening. And, and I think it gave us an opportunity to base some facts on what was going on in the community. And they left there with some data as well to share with their customers. Yeah, so <laughs> I, uh, I grew up in Columbia. I was a police explorer. I, this is my first job. I'm still here. I love it. And um, just being a part of the fabric of Columbia has meant the world to me. And being able to shape some of the policy that we have and giving my neighbor's voice in that has been so, so fruitful to me. Uh, regarding the ballpark project, um, in an era of decreasing public support for use of public funds to build major sports venues, I was impressed that uh, you were able to do this $37 million publicly funded um, sports um, facility um, and your engagement with the community to, to come and increase attendance, especially among minorities. Um, my question is with regards to the decision to do this. Uh, to what extent were the community members themselves involved in deciding that this was something that they want? Or was this really driven from city leadership itself and, and then promoted to the community? Um, 
we had uh, public input ad nauseum. I mean, nonstop engaging the public, recognizing the possibility of building a public-private partnership. So the, the stadium uh, was built with 29 million in public funds and, and the rest, uh, the 10 million or so, were private funds. Um, but this is indeed a public park. Uh, you can go there uh, when there's not a game. It's a, it's a, a third of a mile concourse where people go and run laps around. We host events there, probably more events that are not baseball games uh, than those that actually are baseball games uh, each, and, each and every year. Um, but it was a process in which you have to realize, and I, I'm, I won't get into the economic development portion of it, but recognizing that if you're going to make these types of strategic public investments, they have to serve as, as, a, as a catalyst for the rest of the development you want to see. So we put it in, in the heart of what was technically a brownfield, uh, 181 uh, acre campus, uh, the largest developed parcel of land in any downtown east of the Mississippi River. An old asylum is, is, is indeed what it was. Uh, beautiful and historic character, sylvan uh, trees, and we made a commitment to preserve the historic character of, of, of the community, to build something new that would then surround itself with what will be $1.2 billion of private sector investment to be able to leverage that, to then to continue to provide a good, strong police department and fire department and the services. We've been, we, we, we pride ourselves on being socially progressive in our city. We've grown, we've grown, intentionally grown, uh, our, our private sector base uh, to marry up uh, with the incredible public sector base we have, the state capital, large universities and, and, and hospitals, and the Army's largest training base in, in the world in, in, in Port Jackson. So it's part of a strategy, but it, I will tell you, it was not an easy uh, um, uh, uh, endeavor. Uh, we spent the better part of a little over a year uh, from the time we suggested it to engaging with our citizens, and we had a feasibility study after feasibility study. Um, all of them came back um, on the side that this was a good idea. And we believe over the 20-year trajectory that we plan to build out this, it's going to prove to be, um, and, and I, I would say this, we, we, believe, we believe in baseball too. Uh, we believe that baseball um, is, is an American sport, and we were the largest city in the entire country to not have any professional sport franchises. Um, so this is also a move forward in that direction. Mayor Dolly, I wanted to ask, how do you engage the citizens in your community? Well, um, I engage my citizens um, um, every day in any which way, um, because I believe that um, while we still see dysfunction in Washington. Um, it's not new. It, it didn't just start in 2016. Um, and our state capitals seem to be infected with that state, the same bug. Uh, on the local level, mayors who are Republicans who are Democrats, independents, every single day, if I'm doing something wrong or something my citizens disagree with, I hear about it at church, I hear about it at the grocery store, I hear about it at the traffic light. Um, we, 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 and, and, it, and it gives us a power to be able to communicate some really challenging, pressing issues to our citizens that normally we wouldn't be able to communicate. I can talk about the challenges of, of, of clean air and, and, and global warming, but when I start talking about uh, uh, how do we stop the, the earth from heating up 1.5 degrees Celsius more than it was pre-industrial revolution, people's eyes glaze over. But the mayor can talk to them about the importance of having solar panels on their roof and what it does to reduce their bills in this era of income volatility. I can tell them about how we can help their child fight asthma. There's, there's a, a, a report we have there. So we have um, uh, Mondays with the mayor where, where uh, citizens can come in and sit down and engage with me. I stay very active. Sometimes my wife would say too active on social media. I engage with people on Instagram and, and, and Twitter and we respond. Uh, we have a fantastic team at the city of Columbia. And we, this is, this is a, this is the people's house. Uh, we, we, we make a very intentional and deliberate effort, especially when things are going on of national and international concern, to recognize that people should always find City Hall to be their home when we face some of the xenophobic comments back in 2016 uh, around Muslims. We open up our City Hall chambers. Uh, uh, we, we, we call for all of our citizens to embrace their Muslim neighbors. And people came to our City Hall standing room only from all faiths to, to, to speak about the values that make us special. When we first dealt with the issue of unaccompanied minors coming from Central America, we passed a resolution declaring that we were welcome in the city um, against the backdrop of, of, of probably not very pleasant commentary from people, maybe in other parts of, of the state or of the nation, because it was the right thing to do. And that constant engagement um, is, is, is what we believe in and, and what, we, what we live by. Chris, I'm sorry, we're out of time. 
Columbia, we love your energy. I just get the feeling nothing's gonna stop you. So keep it up. Thank you for being here. Thank you.